also available from TrueTieDye.com. TieDye 101, the basics of making exceptional tieDye. TieDye 101 eliminates the guesswork and teaches you everything you need to know to start making vibrant, colorfast tieDye of your own. Learn the secrets that make great tieDye and useful tips for making the process easier, safer, and more fun. Tie-Dye 101, the first step to putting your imagination on fabric. Hi, I'm Tom. And I'm Martine. Welcome to Tie-Dye 202, Making Shapes with Tie-Dye. Martine and I put our best efforts into getting this video ready, and we're proud to present the process behind some of our favorite designs. By the way, we're going to jump right into folding and dyeing. If you miss Tie-Dye 101, or if you need to brush up on things, like handling chemicals safely, what fabrics you can dye, the proper mixing of chemicals in dye, troubleshooting, and where to obtain materials and supplies, be sure to watch the review at the end of this video. Let's get started. Let's start by learning how to fold a heart design. Then we'll dye this purple heart, and this sunrise heart. Consider making a simple stencil from cardboard or thick paper. Turn a damp, pre-washed t-shirt inside out. Smooth it out flat with the front facing up. Using a washable marker, mark the crease along each side of the hem. Gather the edges together, aligning the marks, and locate the center of the front of the shirt. Form a crease down the center of the shirt. Shake out the wrinkles and lay the shirt down flat on its side. Smooth the center crease and use the marks on the hem to verify that it is accurately centered. Determine a position for your stencil somewhere along the center crease. Draw or trace a half heart shape which will form a perfectly symmetrical heart on the front of the shirt when we unfold it later. Starting from the pointed end of the heart, pinch the marker line into a series of folds and stack them together. Each fold should be about one quarter to one half inch tall, and all the folds should be an even height. Folding along the marker line in this manner causes the long curved edge of the heart shape to naturally twist and compress, forming a line which appears straight across the peaks of your folds. As you approach the end of the line, you may need to maintain significant pressure with your fingers so the folded shape doesn't spring apart. The marker line across the tops of your folds doesn't have to be perfectly straight, just close. Tie on top of the folded line. Don't call a friend yet. You can start the first tie almost one-handed, with the artificial sinew still attached to the roll. Compressing the shirt with ties forms a distinct resistance border that defines the edge of our folded shape. Add another tie approximately one quarter inch outside the first.
submerge the folded shirt in soda ash solution and set it aside to soak for at least 15 minutes. To dye our projects, we're going to start with concentrated solutions of yellow, fuchsia, turquoise, cobalt, and black, mixed using Procyon MX dye powders and a solution of water, urea, water softener, and kelp. We'll mix these colors together to create more colors and dilute them to lighter shades using softened water. Let's mix the colors we'll need for our purple heart. Mix fuchsia with small amounts of turquoise and cobalt to create a purple you like. Create a weak dilution of this purple by adding a small amount to softened water. Mix a much darker, strong dilution of purple using more dye and less softened water. Finally, make a medium strength dilution of purple that is easily distinguishable from your strong and weak dilutions. Remember that colors will be lighter on your finished project than they appear in the bottle. Now we'll dye our project. Apply concentrated purple to the folded heart, stopping at the first tie. Squeeze out excess dye so it doesn't spread in the wrong direction. Use a scribbling motion to lightly apply the weak purple dilution over the rest of the shirt. Apply smaller droplets of the medium strength purple dilution by moving the bottle slightly faster. Sprinkle on even finer droplets of the strong purple dilution. Flip the project over. Dye the other side of the heart with concentrated purple and cover the rest of the shirt using the dilutions, again working from lightest to darkest and applying successively smaller amounts of dye. Don't oversaturate the fabric. Oversaturating the fabric will cause the colors to blur, diminishing their vibrancy and definition. Set the project aside to react. Here's what our finished purple heart will look like after the washout. Next we'll create a sunrise heart. Mix red by combining approximately two-thirds fuchsia and one-third yellow. Mix dark red by adding black to some of this red. Mix orange by combining yellow with 5 to 10 percent concentrated fuchsia. The folded shirt has been soaked in soda ash solution before being placed in the project box. Dye both sides of the folded heart turquoise up to the first tie. Accent the turquoise with a smaller amount of strong dilute purple. Cover the rest of the shirt with an undulating pattern of yellow, orange, red, and dark red, using progressively less of each color. Flip the project over and repeat the color sequence, taking care to not overapply the dye. Set the project aside to react. Here's what our finished sunrise heart will look like after the washout. Next, let's learn to make a shape that appears to be cut out or inset. We're going to fold an arrow design and dye two variations, one using shades of green and one using shades of blue. You may want to make a simple arrow stencil. Turn a damp, pre-washed t-shirt inside out. Fold it in half along the center, with the front of the shirt to the inside. Smooth out wrinkles, especially those along the crease. 
Using a washable marker, trace or draw a half arrowhead design at chest level along the center crease. From the sleeve shoulder, draw an arc and a short straight line to the center crease. From the arrow tip, form small folds of even height along the marker line. When you reach a sharp curve in the line, pay extra attention to twisting the fabric in such a way that the marker line continues to appear as a straight line across the tops of the folds. Tie directly on the folded line and use this tie to compress your folded design even further. Place a second tie one quarter to three eighths of an inch outside the first. Make slightly taller folds along the other line we drew, working from the center crease toward the sleeve. Make the line which forms across the tops of your folds as straight as possible. Tie on top of this line using flat artificial sinew. Another tie, one quarter to one half inch below this one. Let's take another quick look at folding and tying the arrow design. Set the folded shirt in a project box. Put on gloves and pour soda ash solution over the shirt until it is completely saturated. As you prepare to dye the green arrow design, mix a dark forest green using concentrates of turquoise cobalt, and yellow. Mix a smaller amount of bluish green, using only turquoise and yellow. Add softened water to make a strong dilution of approximately two-thirds water to one-third dye. This will be our first strong dilution. Mix a small amount of a different bluish green this time adding a small amount of cobalt in addition to turquoise. Again dilute with two-thirds softened water. This will be our second strong dilution. Choose one of the strong bluish-green dilutions and make a separate medium-strength dilution from it. Using the other strong blue-green dilution, Create a weak dilution that is easily distinguishable from the medium strength and strong dilutions. Finally, make a medium to strong dilution of yellow. If need be, you can adjust the strengths of your solutions once you start to apply them. Before applying any dye, scrunch rippled folds into the soda ash soaked shirt and pack them together tightly. Sprinkle on the weakest blue-green dilution lightly covering the shirt below the ties and inside of the folded arrow shape. Apply the medium dilution next. 
don't apply so much of this second color that the first is completely obscured. Sprinkle on one of the strong bluish green dilutions and then the other. Sprinkle the dilute yellow on top of the bluish greens. Apply dark forest green between the two sets of ties, evenly covering this area. Be careful not to oversaturate this area with dye. Excess dye from this area can flow to other areas of the design, obscuring details. Turn your project over and rearrange any rippled folds that come unpacked. Again apply your bluish green dilutions, working from weakest to strongest. Sprinkle on dilute yellow to expand the range of greens. Finish by applying forest green before setting the project aside to react. Here's what our finished green arrow will look like after the washout. Next we'll dye a blue arrow. Make a blue you like by mixing cobalt and turquoise. You can also add small amounts of fuchsia Create a strong dilution of turquoise, and then a weak dilution. Mix a medium strength dilution of turquoise that is easily distinguishable from your strong and weak dilutions. Also create strong, medium, and weak dilutions of the concentrated blue you mixed. Apply the medium strength turquoise dilution, the weak dilution, and the strong dilution. Then apply the weak blue dilution, the medium strength blue dilution, and the strong dilution. Apply cobalt and your other concentrated blue to the area between the two sets of ties. Flip the project over and apply the same progression of colors, taking care not to oversaturate the fabric. Then set your project aside to react. Here's what our finished blue arrow shirt will look like. Now we'll fold a five-pointed star and use it to create some political controversy on our stars and stripes and diversity designs. A five-pointed star can be tricky to draw freehand, so we suggest making a simple stencil to assist you in marking your project. Turn a damp, pre-washed t-shirt inside out and fold it in half along the center with the front of the shirt to the inside. Smooth out wrinkles along the crease. Place your half star stencil on the center crease and trace it with a washable marker. Draw a diagonal line from the sleeve shoulder to the center crease just below the star. Draw more lines parallel to the crease between your diagonal line and the hem. Starting from the bottom of the star, make a series of small, precise folds along the marker line. When the line makes a sharp turn, Twist the shirt so the marker lines on the walls of the adjacent folds line up with one another. As you pass the turn, a straight line crossing the tops of your folds indicates success.
Maintain pressure on the folded portion of the design to keep it from springing apart as you continue to fold along the marker line. When you finish folding the star, tie on the straight marker line that's formed across the tops of the folds. Make the tie tight so it further compresses the shirt. Add a second tie about 3 8 inch outside the first. From the center crease, fold along the diagonal line toward the sleeve. Make these folds slightly taller. When you reach the edge of the sleeve, tie on the folded line. Raise long creases along the remaining marker lines, forming yet taller folds. Pack these folds together, keeping their marked creases parallel or near parallel for as much of their length as possible. Tie the shirt at the hem and add evenly spaced ties between this tie and the tie at our folded diagonal line. Place your ties one and a half to two inches apart. Make each tie tight so that the shirt compresses under it. Let's take one more look at marking, folding, and tying this design. Now we'll dye the stars in stripes. Like the other projects we've covered so far in Tie-Dye 202, the folded shirt needs to be soaked in soda ash solution for 15 minutes or longer before we apply the dye. Apply cobalt or whatever concentrated blue you choose to the area of the shirt between the tied star and diagonal line. Tilt the folded star up so the dye doesn't rush into the star as it is being applied. When applying any color, and especially a dark color, avoid oversaturating the fabric with dye. Your finished work will show more details and you'll save money on dye. Apply a coiling line of red to the stripes area. <laughs> the red with dark red. Flip the project over, paying attention to keep the star free of dye. Repeat the same color combination. Chances are you won't need to apply as much dye on the second side. Color dripping away from your project doesn't necessarily mean you're applying too much dye. Excess soda ash solution will carry some of your dye away with it as it is displaced. Keep the star tilted upward as you set your project aside to react. Here's what our finished stars and stripes will look like as long as we wash it out properly so the star doesn't turn pink. Next, We'll apply slightly different colors to create the diversity design. Apply cobalt or other concentrated blue to the same area we did for the stars and stripes. Once again, keep the star tilted up so it has a chance of remaining undyed. As you can see, 
our grid made from wire shelving also serves to ease the task of controlling the spread of dye. Working from the border of the blue toward the hem, apply red, augmented with dark red, orange, yellow, turquoise, and purple. Repeat this color sequence until you reach the end of the shirt. When you flip the project over, remember to keep the star up. Dye the second side, applying the same color progression in corresponding locations. Make light colored areas like yellow wide enough that they won't be lost as the dye spreads. Although we've warned you to not over apply dye, you still need to apply enough dye to penetrate four compressed layers of fabric. You will quickly develop a feel for applying just the right amount of dye. Set your project aside, preferably somewhere warm, and give the dye time to react and bond with the fabric. Here's what our finished diversity will look like. a peace sign. Then we'll dye a couple of variations, the protest and the Rasta piece. Turn a damp, pre-washed t-shirt inside out and lay it flat with the front facing up. Locate the center of the front using marked side creases and the shoulder seams as guides just as we did for the heart projects. Form a crease down the front center of the shirt, lay it flat on its side, and smooth the crease. To draw the guidelines for the peace sign, assemble a makeshift compass by tying artificial sinew to a washable marker. Hold the sinew taut between the marker and your other hand. Determine the radius and center of the peace sign you wish to create and draw a semicircle on the shirt. Connect the ends of the semicircle with a straight line on the center crease. One diagonal line completes our half peace sign. Raise the first fold at the intersection of the semicircle and the diagonal line. Pinch the fabric to form more small, even height folds along the semicircle line, taking care not to allow the layers of fabric to separate. Pack series of folds together, making sure the short line formed across the peaks of your folds remains straight. <laughs> Stop where the semicircle intersects the crease. Working in the opposite direction from the diagonal line to semicircle intersection, fold along this remaining section of semicircle until you reach the center crease. Tie on the short, straight line formed from the folded semicircle. Center the knot above the diagonal line to semicircle intersection, which we took care to keep visible. Leave two 8 to 10 inch tails on this tie. We'll need them in a minute. Flip the shirt onto its other side. Grasp the center crease 
and gently roll it over so it forms a loop parallel to the folded semicircle. Using the marker line as a guide, fold along the center crease in the same manner we folded the semicircle. Notice how handling both sides of the fabric helps keep the layers of t-shirt from separating. Stack your folded center crease directly on top of the tied semicircle. Using the tails we left on the first knot, tie just to the outside of the center crease. Don't cut the tails off yet, we still need them. Find the diagonal line we drew. Find the point where this line intersects the center crease and start folding from this point. The intersection should be near the last knot we tied. Follow the line around to the other side as you fold. Concentrate on not separating the two layers of the shirt. Both layers need to remain together to produce a symmetrical design. The folding of the diagonal line ends where it intersects the semicircle at the first knot we tied. Flip one of the tails from the knot on the other side over to the first knot so the sinew lies on top of the diagonal line we just folded. Bring the other tail around from the bottom and tie them together. If your project is experiencing a little distortion at this point, it won't matter much as long as all of the key points are lined up as we've shown you. Leave the tails intact and flip them around to the other side. Tie along the inside of the center crease, further compressing the fabric. Cut off the tails, leaving enough that the knot won't slip out should it loosen. Place another tie about two inches outside of your design. This is what a folded, tied peace sign should look like. Let's take another look at the process of marking, folding, and tying a peace sign. Soak the tied peace sign in soda ash solution. The first peace sign variation will die is the protest. You can make an even more intense red by adding three quarters of a tablespoon of powdered yellow Procyon MX dye directly to a cup of concentrated fuchsia dye solution. Since we're going to cover a large area, we diluted our new red about 25% with softened water to stretch it further. Once the tied shirt has had plenty of time to soak, squeeze out excess soda ash solution and arrange the shirt in the project box. Using an eyedropper or a small squeeze bottle, apply dots of yellow to the areas inside of the tied peace sign shape. Put orange dots next to the yellow. And red dots next to these. Apply dots of turquoise next, remembering to leave room for colors to spread. 
Finish this area with purple dots. Carefully apply black to the tied semicircle and the tied diagonal line. On the other side, apply black to the rest of the tied semicircle and the center line of the peace sign on the center crease. Finish the outline of the peace sign by dyeing the rest of the tied diagonal line. We've decided to dye the rest of our shirt red. The amount of dye you use here is all up to you. Applying less dye often results in more interesting patterns. In this case though, we're making the shirt almost solid red. Adding dark red gives our shirt a little more range and texture. Tilt the piece sign up so color from the rest of the shirt won't creep into it. Cover the project to keep it moist while the dye reacts. Here is what our finished protest will look like. Now let's make the Rasta piece. The tied shirt has been soaked in soda ash solution. Dye the inside of the piece sign yellow. Apply stripes of red over some of the yellow and dark red over these. Dye the outline of the piece sign black using the ties as your guide. Dye the rest of the shirt using a dilute green followed by a concentrated forest green. Flip the project over and repeat the color combination. Adjust the amounts of color you apply so the fabric is adequately covered but not oversaturated. Here's what our finished Rasta piece shirt will look like. It's time to try something a little more complicated. Let's go for something really out of this world and make the alien and his or her spacecraft. To fold the alien, start with the pre-washed shirt turned inside out and creased along its front center, as we did for the heart and peace sign. Draw the half outline of the alien's head neck, and shoulders along the center crease. Draw a half ellipse for the mouth and an ellipse for the eye. Fold and tie the mouth first. To tie the eye shape, fold it in half down the center, then fold along the resulting half ellipse marker line. Tie on this folded line. Place another tie 1 8 to 3 8 inch outside the first. Fold along the marker outline of the alien, starting from the shirt hem. 
Take care not to allow the layers of shirt to separate as you fold. Tie on the short, straight line formed from the folded outline. Place another tie about one half inch outside the outline tie. Add another tie one and a half to two inches outside the previous tie. Here is what a folded, tied alien should look like. Find the center of the back of the shirt, make a crease, and smooth it out flat. Draw a half football shape or pointed half ellipse. Draw another curve inside this shape from its apex to the crease. Fold along the outline of the half football shape from center crease to apex to center crease. Tie on the folded outline, leaving tails of several inches on the knot. Fold along the inside curved line from the center crease to its intersection with the tied half football shape, which should be near the knot we just tied. Lay the knot tail on top of the folded line and wrap the tail around so it crosses its parent tie on the other side. Slip the tail under the tie, loop it back around to its parent knot, and tie it. Put another tie, one quarter to one half inch, outside of the spacecraft's tied outline. Here's what the folded, tied spacecraft should look like. Let's take a final look at the process of marking, folding, and tying a wearable portrait of our extraterrestrial friend and his or her spacecraft. Soak the tied alien in soda ash solution for at least 15 minutes. Then squeeze out excess soda ash solution and set the tied alien out to dry. It can take several days for a tied shirt to dry, so plan ahead. Now let's dye the alien. Mix a concentrated bright green you like using yellow, turquoise, and cobalt. Mix small amounts of two shades of gray from weak and medium strength dilutions of black. Apply green to the alien's head, neck, and shoulders. Dye between the innermost outline tie and the ties outlining the eyes and mouth. Notice how the dye spreads differently through dry, soda ash infused fabric. The dye tends to spread down through the layers of fabric more quickly than it spreads horizontally across the surface of the fabric. Apply yellow outside the green. The yellow will make the alien stand out on the red background, but it also acts as a placeholder for the green, controlling its spread beyond our tied outline. 
carefully apply black to the folded eye so excess dye drips away from the project. Squeeze out excess black to control its spread. Repeat this procedure, applying a much smaller amount of dye to the mouth. Apply orange outside of the yellow. Then turn your attention to the spacecraft. Dye the smaller, upper section medium gray using your medium strength black dilution. Dye the larger, lower section light gray using your weak dilution of black. Using an eyedropper or small squeeze bottle, dye the outline of the spacecraft black. Use the ties as your guide. Apply turquoise outside the spacecraft outline. Dye the rest of the shirt using red and dark red, leaving some room for the dye to spread. When you flip your project over, pay attention to the amount of dye which has seeped through from the other side so you don't over or under saturate. Remember to leave some room for the dye to spread. Cover your project to keep it moist while the dye reacts. Here's what our finished alien and spacecraft will look like. After the dye has been applied to our projects, we need to set them aside while the dye reacts and bonds to the fabric. At 70 degrees Fahrenheit, a project should sit for 12 hours. At 60 degrees Fahrenheit, it will need about 18 hours to react. Temperatures significantly below 60 degrees can be too cold for the dye to completely react. So put your project somewhere warm. If you don't want to wait the standard 12 to 18 hours, cover your project and microwave it until it's hot. When dyeing silk, Heat from microwaving is the necessary catalyst to achieve maximum color saturation. Avoid breathing fumes and steam burns by allowing the project to cool before you handle it. When the dye has had enough time or heat to react, it's time to cut off the ties and wash it out. The goals of the washout are to solidify the bond between the dye and fabric while washing away excess dye in such a way that no staining occurs. While especially visible in white areas, staining also dulls richly colored areas, so it's well worth trying to avoid. Start by turning your water heater all the way up and give the water plenty of time to get hot. Be careful to avoid scalding yourself. Pre-fill the washing machine with hot water and carefully cut the ties off of your dyed fabric. Allow the machine to begin agitating and drop the fabric into the machine. If you're washing out a delicate fabric, remember to put it in a mesh bag. Allow the machine to agitate for about 30 seconds, then stop it and set it to drain and spin out. When the machine finishes spinning, refill it immediately with hot water. When it begins to agitate, add 2 teaspoons Synthopol for a small load, 4 teaspoons for a medium load, and 6 teaspoons for a large load. Then let the washer run through an entire hot-cold cycle. After the washout, hang the items out to dry or put them in the dryer. 
it's always best to hang dry delicate fabrics like rayon and silk. Don't forget to turn your water heater back down when the washout is finished. You'll save on your energy bill and prevent someone from getting scalded. When your project is dried, wash it again in warm water with vinegar. This will remove any loose dye that remains on the fabric and prevent it from staining when the fabric first comes in contact with perspiration or precipitation. We'll use one cup of vinegar for a small load, one and a half cups for a medium load, and two cups for a large load. When your project has dried, it is ready to display or wear. Thank you for watching. We hope the things we've shown you inspire you and assist you in your tie-dye artistry. Imagine how many different shapes you can use as you create your own tie-dye projects. The possibilities are endless. So, when you make something really cool, be sure to send or email us a picture. We've discussed a number of extremely useful techniques but it's still only the tip of the iceberg. In our next video, Tie-Dye 303, all about mandalas, suns, and lotus blossoms, we'll teach you our most advanced folding and dyeing methods. If you have any questions about safety, mixing chemicals and dye, what fabrics to use, and troubleshooting, stick around for our review after the credits. Our review contains important information and steps that will help you to obtain the best possible results. Until then, peace, peace love, love, and, and happy tie-dyeing. Tie
It is important to emphasize that when making tie-dye, you will be handling chemicals. The chemicals you will be handling are considered safe for home use when handled properly. They are generally considered safer than common household products such as drain cleaner, oven cleaner, pesticides, and bleach. However, when handling any chemicals, it is important to handle them all with the utmost care. Don't eat, drink, or smoke in the presence of dyes and other chemicals. Never use kitchen utensils or appliances for the tie-dyeing process unless they will be permanently retired from use in food preparation and consumption. Always store dye and other chemicals in a safe location, out of the reach of pets and small children. Safety gear is essential and should be worn every time we handle any dye or chemical. You will need gloves, a dust mask, goggles or safety glasses, an apron, a chemical material safety data sheet, some clothing you will use only for tie-dyeing, and a pair of rubber-soled shoes. Obtain the Material Safety Data Sheet, or MSDS, for each chemical you purchase, which will explain specific risks involved and what to do in the case of an emergency. We're going to use Procyon MX fiber reactive dye. Procyon MX dyes can be used in all cellulose fibers, such as cotton, rayon, and hemp. Procyon MX can also be used with silk, even though it's a protein fiber petroleum-based synthetic fibers, such as nylon, polyester, and acrylic, cannot be dyed using Procyon MX. For dye, you will need 2 ounces to 1 pound each of fuchsia red MX-8B, yellow MX-8G, turquoise MX-G, cobalt blue MX-2G, and black MX-CWNA, or whichever black your supplier says is the darkest. You will need a pound or more of a chemical water softener unless you have a reverse osmosis softener. You will also need 1 to 5 pounds of urea, powdered kelp, 1 to 5 pounds of soda ash, 1 pint to 1 quart of synthrapol, non-iodized salt, and vinegar. Everything we're using can be safely disposed of down the drain, regardless of if you're connected to a septic system or a city sewer. You'll want to dilute anything you pour down the drain with water. Only mix chemicals and dye outside or in an extremely well ventilated area. To make our dye premix solution, we're going to dissolve urea in really hot water. So make sure your water heater is turned up and give the water adequate time to get hot. Add two teaspoon water softener, one teaspoon kelp, and two cups urea to one half gallon of hot water. Put the cap on the jug and shake it until everything is dissolved. Although we need the water very hot to dissolve urea, the premix solution needs to cool to room temperature before we add our dye powders. Mixing dye powders into a hot solution will weaken them substantially. Whenever you dilute a color solution, use only softened water. Add two teaspoons water softener to half gallon of warm water. Put the cap on the jug and shake until the water softener is dissolved. The next chemical we need is soda ash. Its chemical name is sodium carbonate. Soda ash is also referred to as fixer. Its purpose is to shift the pH of the dye reaction from neutral to basic, creating optimal conditions for the dye to bond with the fiber. Add four teaspoons water softener, one cup soda ash to one gallon warm water. Stir with your whisk until soda ash and water softener is completely dissolved. Soda ash and dye should not come into contact with each other until the dye is being applied to the fabric. Never mix soda ash powder or solutions with dye powder or solutions. When dissolving water softener, urea, or soda ash in water, always mix the dry or powdered chemical into water. Never attempt to dissolve by adding water to dry soda ash, water softener, or urea. While we give our dye premix solution a bit more time to cool, we can wash the fabric we're going to dye to prepare it for folding and tying. If you're confident you can dye your fabric without scouring it, pre-fill your washing machine with cold water. Add one half cup water softener for a small load, 
three quarters cup for a medium load, and one cup for large loads. Let the machine agitate until the water softener dissolves, then add your fabric to the machine. If you're pre-washing a delicate fabric, don't forget to put it in a mesh bag. Allow the machine to agitate fully and spin it out manually without giving it a chance to refill. Now your fabric is ready to fold. If you do suspect that your fabric might have additives or finishes applied to it, or if you're dyeing silk, you'll want to scour it. Before you begin scouring, make sure your water heater is turned up. Pre-fill your washing machine with hot water. Add water softener in the same amounts we used for a regular pre-wash, plus one teaspoon synthropol, teaspoon soda ash, for every yard of fabric you'll be scouring. Two t-shirts is about one yard. Put your fabric into the washing machine and allow the machine to run through an entire hot-cold cycle. Don't forget to add more water softener to the washing machine after it fills up for the last time. When the machine finishes, your fabric is scoured and ready to fold. The first color we are going to mix is lemon, yellow MX8G. Add two tablespoons of the dye powder to the premix solution and shake it vigorously until all of the dye powder is completely dissolved. To mix the fuchsia, red MX8G, add two tablespoons of dye powder to the premix solution and shake it until all of the dye powder is dissolved. To mix turquoise, MXG, add three and a half tablespoons of dye powder to the premix solution. Put the lid on and shake it until all the dye powder is dissolved. To mix cobalt, blue MX2G, add three tablespoons of dye powder to the premix solution. Close the lid and shake vigorously. For black MXCWNA, add four and a half tablespoons and two tablespoons non-iodized salt to the premix solution. Close the lid and shake vigorously. If any of your dye concentrate solutions won't dissolve completely, you can add up to 10% softened water to help them dissolve. Now that we've finished mixing our dye concentrates, we can apply them to the fabric directly, use them to mix other colors, or dilute them to lighter shades. Whenever you dilute a color solution, Use only softened water. Never dilute with dye premix solution. Diluting with dye premix solution is not advised since this alters the ratio of urea to powdered dye, which we've already carefully established. Never dilute a color with soda ash solution. Dye exposed to soda ash will become inactive in a few hours. If you have leftover dye solution, which you would like to use later, fill it cooler with some ice to keep them cool. A small refrigerator will also work and will keep you from having to buy ice. At room temperature, dye solutions begin to lose strength after only three hours. If we store them in a cooler, on ice, or in a refrigerator, they can be stored and used for two weeks or more. Before you start pouring any soda ash solution down the drain, keep in mind that it can be stored indefinitely. So if you're planning on tie-dyeing again, you can store it in a closed container. A microwave is also useful because it accelerates the dye reaction. Rather than having to let your project sit overnight and wait to wash it out, you can have it ready in a few minutes. When you microwave a project, place it in a plastic container or a plastic bag to keep moisture from escaping. If too much moisture escapes, dry fabric will scorch and burn. A covered t-shirt can be microwaved for about three to five minutes on a high setting. Microwaving silk dyed with Procyon MX dyes sets the dye, resulting in bright, vibrant color. It is not safe to use a cooler, refrigerator, or microwave for food preparation or storage after it has come into contact with dye and chemicals. Our website, www.truetiedye.com, also has all of the resources on where to get dye, chemicals, supplies, white clothing, and fabrics.